everyone, how's it going? My name is Alec from High Noon Hobby. Thanks for checking in again to the channel. This time we're just going to do a super quick video. I had a few people ask for it on my Instagram. So here we are. We're going to show you how to put a Reefs 99 micro servo into the Capra four wheel steer to enable the dig option. I already have it in there. I've already done all the work. So I'm gonna kind of reverse engineer it. And as I reverse engineer it, I'll show you what you need to do to put your dig servo in here. A few quick notes. First off, all of the hardware to enable dig is included in the box besides a micro servo. And then obviously you're going to need a different transmitter. You do not need a different receiver if the transmitter that you get has that additional channel that you need for the dig, um, but is also spectrum, has to be spectrum. If you don't run a spectrum controller, but you have that extra channel already, you will have to replace the receiver. A note about replacing the receiver, the receiver is a receiver and ESC combo with the motor. If you have to replace this, this receiver because you don't have or don't want to use, which more power to you, a spectrum transmitter, then you're gonna be a little bit boned in terms of this modification just the way that they describe it. So the way they describe it on the box, the way that they describe it online, and the way that they describe it in the manual is that it's basically a drop-in. All you need to do is get a micro servo. The micro servo that they recommend is a Spectrum micro servo, and I can throw up the part number right now to that, although I would absolutely not recommend that you get that servo. If you look anywhere online, the servo has terrible reviews and there's a reason for it. It's because everyone knows it doesn't work very well for dig, even though that's what Axial says you should use for dig. So what should you use for dig? Well, you're here, so you probably figured out that you should use a Reefs micro servo. I'm going to be using the Reefs 99 in here today. Now, the big thing about using a Reefs servo is that they're really powerful, um, which is great for dig. It means that if you're in the middle of a tight obstacle and you really need to have that dig enabled and you need it to just work instantly and not have any lag time and not have any weird sort of inputs to the driving or to the truck itself, um, then you're going to want this Reefs servo. It's going to get the job done uh, well for you. So I think that that is kind of all the pre-notes that I have before we drop down and start breaking this thing open. So let's go ahead and start with that. We will uh, break out some tools. I'll show you what you need and uh, we'll start cracking this thing open and I'll show you uh, what you'll need to do to get this done. The easiest way to do what I'm talking about, oh, let's turn this thing on its side, is to undo these four screws. So there's four screws on the corners they're on the other side here as well. I'm not going to turn it around to show you, but you get the idea. They look exactly the same as this on the other side. Four of those screws. Now, when you undo those screws, this bottom part, essentially the entire electronics tray, is going to drop out from the bottom of the truck. It makes it a little bit easier to work on, to do what we're talking about doing. Um, and so you'll want to probably do that to do what we're talking about doing here. You know, 2.5 hex. These are really long bolts. Okay, so you can see as soon as you drop that bolt, that last bolt uh, on the side, this tray is now going to sit below the body and you can kind of wiggle this body around. The body is now just attached by the shocks to the rest of the system under here. All right, so the parts that come in the box with the axial Capra four-wheel steer that you will need to complete this whole operation. There's a little baggie of parts. I think that the parts all come along with that little T uh, screw for your wheels. You'll find these little attachment points for the servo. So there's two little T-shaped brackets, one on either side of this thing, um, that have one screw that screw in on the bottom, and that's a 2.5 mil. Uh, well, maybe that is a 2 mil, um, but it's a slightly larger rounded head, and then it's got a small kind of uh, thumb knurled uh, screw to go onto the servo itself on either side, just one. So that's one thing to consider with this uh, Reefs microserver. It's set up so that this bracket can accept, technically can accept 
two screws, um, but if you use just the center part of the bracket, you can just use one screw and that centers it on this mount and that works perfectly fine. No modifications necessary to that bracket. You can see that the servo arm that I'm using here is not exactly ideal for this purpose. And with this one, uh, this screw that's on the far end, uh, it was supplied with the Axial Capra four-wheel steer. And this screw that is on the servo side was supplied with the Reefs Micro 99 in the box. I had to use a drill bit and drill this out just so that this screw would fit through because the holes on this servo mount, obviously it's a micro servo mount, and this servo arm that I got, uh, the holes were just meant for screws of this size and not of the larger 2 mil size. So... By drilling that out, no big deal at all. I was able to kind of choose what side of the hole that I was drilling out I wanted to drill out. And by doing that, I was able to center this larger screw on um, where it needed to be to be centered with this shaft that's coming out of the transmission. Underneath here, it's a little hard to see. There's that little plastic spacer um, that has kind of a shoulder. It's like a, it's a round spacer and it's got a little shoulder on one side of it. Uh, you'll need that and then the bolt that goes with the screw that's going through that spacer. You won't need the servo arm, the plastic servo arm. It's a servo saver type of arm with a spring and everything. It's a bigger, much bigger arm than this. You won't need that. If you set your endpoints correctly and you set tooth correctly on this, the, the center tooth on this correctly, you should be fine. This thing shouldn't overheat and you shouldn't have any problems with needing a servo saver with this very, very strong Reefs micro servo. Okay, so the next thing that you need to do now that we've kind of looked at that is once you've got this open, you're going to need to open up the transmission. And the easiest way to do that is to take the transmission out of the Capra. And um, so to do that, you only need to unscrew a few screws. You'll see four of these screws here. They're flat flush screws. You'll need to undo all four of these, no particular order, and that will allow the transmission mechanism along with the 35 turn motor to pop out. Now the 35 turn motor is going to be attached to the truck still. There are quick disconnect couplers on those black and red wires that are connecting the motor to the Capra, so you'll be able to quickly and easily disconnect uh, the motor, and you can pull the entire motor and transmission assembly out without removing uh, the motor from the transmission. You'll also need to undo the screws that are pin screws holding the axle shafts attached to either side of the transmission. You would approach it from this side, kind of. You'd come in from that way, right? So the screws are on the opposite side. You can't see them right now. And once you have that dig assembly trend uh, of the transmission dropped off, you'll take the, I don't like that they put the, the kind of loop that accepts the servo arm. I don't like that they threaded that on already because as far as I can tell, the only way to remove the spacer that they are talking about needing to remove to get dig to work, the only way to get that spacer out is to unscrew the little loop, the little eyelet that accepts the servo arm. You need to unscrew that and then that will allow you to slide everything out of that part of the housing that you've removed from the transmission and it will allow you to take that spacer out. I know that this sounds really difficult, but I promise you it isn't. As soon as you get that thing open, you're gonna see it's it's super simple. This is a pretty simple thing. So those three screws come out, this housing part comes off, you take that spacer out, you put everything back together the way you had it without that spacer, and you put it back on. Took me maybe five minutes. So once that is done, you're golden. You just need to assemble, like we talked about, the uh, the micro servo mounts and take that micro servo, put it on, put the servo arm on and run that screw through it with the plastic spacer so that the screw isn't just loose in that eye eyelet that's coming out of the transmission. That's kind of a big piece, right? Because if your screw, if you just run a screw through your servo arm and then you run that through the eyelet, you're going to have a lot of play and it's going to be very difficult to accurately set your dig system with your servo. This is your ESC and receiver combo. This is installed upside down. So when I say the bottom, I'm referring to the bottom of the truck's riding position. When I say the top, 
I'm referring to like that direction, the facing the top of the truck. But technically, this thing's installed upside down. And that confused me a lot, because when I looked at the diagram for this part number, I saw that the two open ports that you see right, like, well, you might not be able to really see them, but where my finger is right there, there's two open ports on the bottom of the truck's running position on this thing. Those are not auxiliary ports. Those are like a binding and a programming port. The port that you need to use is on the top. But there's this weird like capacitor plugged into it and it says do not unplug. So I got really confused by that at first. Don't worry about that. You just need to unplug that capacitor. You then plug your micro servo into that top port here. And then you can program that off of aux 2. So once all that's done, you're pretty much there. The only thing you have to do is set endpoints and make sure that this thing is centered well. Um, for your reference, all the way forward is going to give you your full uh, four-wheel capability. If you want, you can center it as a second position, and if you kind of center your arm or give it just a slight bit of right from center, um, that will put it into neutral mode, and that's a pretty large area that you can kind of use as your center point, and that will be your neutral mode. You don't have to do that. You could also just do a two position and have it dig on dig off or dig off dig on and that works fine too but you can run just so that you're aware a three position and put the second position in the middle and that will allow you to run uh, a neutral mode for your rear wheels which is kind of cool and then you'll just want to make sure that you're not uh, over torquing when you're going to the dig mode because that will also make this servo heat up and not like you very much at all so once you get that taken care of, you're ready to go out and try out Dig and see how you like it. I really appreciate you guys watching. Thank you for uh, for tuning in. If you have any other questions, comments, anything like that, leave them down below. If you like this video, uh, go ahead and give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe to High Noon Hobby. More really big things coming. We've got a lot of huge events coming up in 2022, or hopefully huge events, if you guys want to participate. Um, so stay tuned, subscribe for more information on that stuff all coming up. We've got the website coming out, merch coming out. We'll have uh, patches, all sorts of fun stuff going on in the future. Stay tuned. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Facebook. Thanks very much, guys. We'll see you next time.